Hi and welcome to part two of the course. Today we will be covering uh, column design. So now we've completed the load rundowns, we know all the loads on all the columns of the building, so now we can proceed to uh, which is most likely to be the first design package, which is columns. So what we're going to cover today is uh, we're going to assume that the actual design theory was covered in university, but the extra things we'll cover today are things like the column grade and the, the strengths that can be achieved with columns and the effects that it has on the size and uh, buildability, so what are the realistic reinforcement spacings for your column. The cost, what is the most cost effective way of designing the column. Uh, the transitions, so when the column passes through the slab, so you might have a higher strength column passing through a lower, lower strength concrete in the slab and back to higher strength concrete. So how the force transfers through the slab has an effect also. Uh, in addition, the effect of uh, precast versus in situ and the trends toward precast and the advantages and, and things you need to consider and also special confinement. So as you get, this is uh, applicable for high strength concrete. So as concrete gets stronger, what tends to happen is the concrete tends to burst out the bars. So we need special confinement leaks surrounding to, to hold in the bars. So one of the biggest decisions you have as the design engineer is for the column strength or the column grade. So for the vertical elements, this is usually a, a bit higher than, than the slab. So this can be around 40 to 100 MPa concrete. So as you increase the strength, obviously you can decrease dimension, required dimensions for the column. So in decreasing the dimensions, you increase the space in the building so there's more saleable area for the client and also the architect is happy. However, as you get stronger concrete, it becomes much harder to pour. As the water to, water to cement ratio decreases and you have to start using super plasticizers and then the concrete can cure really quickly on site, so making it much harder to pour. Also, as you get higher strength concrete, there are extra problems to deal with. We will cover soon the transmission, so as the concrete uh, moves from high strength to lower strength slab to higher strength concrete, and also the bursting force. So another thing we need to consider with high strength concrete is the bursting force. So as the concrete is greater than 50 MPa, bursting forces start to develop. So that means the concrete, sorry, the steel bars are starting wanting to, to pull out. So we need to nominate a spacing and diameter of the ligatures and the amount of uh, ligature legs to be greater than this bursting force. So as we can see here in this situation, we have a concrete bursting force which will be able to be calculated with your design code. And we need to do it for both sides. So here we got section XX. So we have a concrete bursting force for this face. So for this dimension, and then we have one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five uh, ligatures reacting against this concrete bursting force and holding it together. And for the other direction, we have one, two, and then two at an angle. So you, this will be reduced due to the, to the angle to this. So again, this needs to be greater than the concrete bursting force. So we need to nominate a diameter and spacing, vertical spacing for all these, these ligatures. So another thing we need to consider is you might need to uh, change the orientation or the column type and amount of bars so we can fit in more ligatures uh, for the bursting force. So in this situation we have a change in column shape. So here we have a 1300 by 300 column on top moving through a 200 thick slab back down to a 500 by 500 column. So the two things we need to consider here are the transmission surface and the concrete strength. So here we have a quite simple 1300 by 300 uh, column design, but what about here in the slab zone as the, as the force passes through? So the first thing I'll, I'll talk about is the transmission surface. So as the load passes from the top to the bottom, here in this region it's not quite 1300, the dimension it's not quite 500. Neither on this side you got 300 by 500. So the first area you should take for the surface area is 
inch directly down below like that. So here, the uh, dimension is not quite 1300 or 500, it is actually 500. And again, on this side, as the force passes from the top through to the bottom, you can't really take 300 or 500. You're best off going somewhere in the middle, and in this case, it's 300. So for both surfaces, we take the smaller dimension of the bottom and the smaller dimension of the top, and that is the, uh, the area to be designed for. So another thing to consider is as the concrete strength decreases from 80 MPa to 40 back to 80 MPa. But what's the strength in between here? Is it 40 or is it 80? It's really, it's going to be different for each design code you have, but it's going to be somewhere in the middle. However, as this depth increases, it's going to become closer to the 40 MPa, but as it decreases, it's going to become closer to the 80 MPa. So the way to design this area is a new column, design it as a column in pure compression for the new dimension of 500 by 300. And use your local design code to design this reduced strength. So two solutions for this problem are number one, to increase the strength back up to 80 MPa to make this area work, you can block this area off and you can pour this area of slab also at 80 MPa. However, this is a little bit harder to build for some builders. Another solution is to have the angle coming out at 45 degree angle. So if in this case, we'd have it coming out by 45 degree and 45 degrees. So then the new area transmission zone would be 500 plus 200 plus 200 so the new top zone will no longer be 500 or 1300 it'll be uh, 900 and on this side as it passes through it'll be uh, easily get to the 500 so that is another way to do it uh, increasing the the angle however whenever you put a load at an angle it doesn't uh, produce it does produce tensile forces, however, we're going to cover this in the strut and tyre section. So we have a reduced transmission surface and a reduced concrete strength, but what about the steel bars? So you have one column type with a certain type of steel bar for the bottom column. Some will be cogging through the slab like this, and also for the top column you'll have another column type with some bars cogging through the slab, developing the slab like this. However, the steel bars that are going to help us for our uh, concrete and compression in the transmission zone are the bars that pass from the top slab, top column, through the slab, down to the bottom column. So one of the major factors that we've covered for the column design is the concrete grade and strength which you have a decision over. However, what we don't always have a decision over is the shape of columns. So we have both short columns, which are, have a large D on H ratio, and slender columns. So short columns uh, have a much greater strength due to the strength coming from the individual cross sections and are unlikely to buckle. However, slender columns have a much smaller D on H ratio. So these are usually preferred by architects in apartment buildings because uh, long slender columns or blade columns can fit in between walls. However, as you load a slender column, there's an exponential uh, reduction in strength. So there's an eccentricity about its own axis that for the slender columns uh, producing a moment about the column and exponentially reducing the strength in its own axis. One of the most important things that a lot of engineers tend to neglect is the buildability of their design. So when you nominate reinforcement, it is important not to nominate it that close and that bunch up together that is actually impossible to build. So recommended spacings for longitudinal bars in columns is about 150 to uh, 300 millimetres and for the ligatures or the horizontal bars between 100 and 300 millimetres if there's not confinement re reinforcement required. 
Also, when there is uh, important transfers, it is important to take a lot of time out to detail it properly to make sure what you design is possible to build. Because it is right to get these things right early as opposed to when they're going to build it on site. It's always much more preferable for, for the client and the builder for the construction process to be finished as quickly as possible so the building can be occupied and the client can make their money. So the, with that, there's a trend toward precast columns. So precast columns are made inside the factory, so they're poured with your reinforcement and uh, made exactly how you design, limited to the crane capacity and truck capacity to site. So these planks come to site with uh, starter bars coming out uh, with all the ligatures inside. So uh, you can pour the in-situ slab on top or you can also have the starter bars moving up and screwed into the column above. So they've also got grout tubes, so uh, bars from the slab or or other precast columns or wall elements can be screwed in and then grouted after. So grout is a fluid form of concrete that can be used to fill gaps. So whenever you have a hole inside the concrete, you can just slip some of the grout in equal or higher strength and then there'll be no problem to achieving the full connection. So there you go guys, hopefully that's enough to get you started with your column design packages. So in summary, what we've covered today is the column grade and as we increase the column grade, obviously the strength of the column increases, reducing the required dimensions of the column. So uh, also sizes, the effect, effect of slenderness. So as, the, as soon as the column becomes slender, it becomes much, much less, less strong with its height. Buildability, so obviously we want to get a buildable design. So we, we need our longitudinal bar space between 150 to 300 millimeters and the and the horizontal bars or ligatures about a hundred to three hundred millimeters uh, also confinement so as we get higher strength concrete the, the concrete wants to burst out burst the bars out so we need leaks to hold them so we nominate the the leak diameter and leak spacing to overcome this force also transition so as we get a high strength concrete load of one dimension column through the lower strength slab and then to a different column type below and how we do that. And also with a trend toward precast uh, and why we go for precast and, and the effect of it. So that's part two guys, look forward to the end of part three.